Hello everyone. So welcome to Tea with Ravi. And uh, I'm not really drinking beer. It is just a T-shirt. All right. So let us uh, let us go through some of the recent updates from uh, the Atlassian ecosystem. And the first update is about uh, smart queries in uh, Jira. Now I'm not really sure if you ever tried or if you ever noticed. But there is actually this feature in Jira where uh, you can uh, perform search, of course, by typing in what you're looking for. But apart from the basic search and apart from uh, the JQL, the advanced search, you can actually type in uh, things like my open issues and basically, you know, natural language. It is not really like AI. It is very simple, but it is there. You can use it and let me show you <clears throat> so if i go to my jira instance and if i let us say try to search for something like my open bugs right so it will actually create the jql for me so this is uh, fine this is great but i think I've, I've mentioned this in the past it is not always desirable because uh, you may want to further refine it you may want to further uh, you know tweak it and in most cases you don't really want uh, uh, because it, it it will only work when you have the right commands if you type in something like uh, my open bugs <coughs> android so this will uh, this will work and try to make a guess or maybe maybe based on the keywords for example in my in my case android is a project but Android might not be a project, right? It can be something else. So this is great. I think it's good, but it is something that was not really uh, useful for each and every use case and for everyone, because I personally prefer on, uh, or I prefer searching based on filters or, you know, my own dashboards because I know how to do it. And I, but, I, but I think at the same time, it, for, for new Jira users, it, it can be useful. But the news is, the update is that this can be disabled. And uh, I was trying to disable it. Uh, I couldn't because the post says that you can go to the personal settings. And if you go to the personal settings, you will find uh, somewhere here in your uh, Jira labs, a feature or toggle to disable it, which is good. So uh, I like this and uh, definitely this will be appreciated by many users. All right, the next update is about uh, insight now this is something that i want to talk about uh, you know for a few minutes if you ever looked at your jira project especially jira software project it could be canva or it could be it could be it could be a scum based project you have some information about uh, your project like it could be some information about your sprints. It could be some information about your uh, board itself. Basically, if I look at my sprint, basically my active board, I have this button here called Insight. Now, this button, it has been there for a while and uh, it is good because it will show you a few details that you may want to look at, that you may want to maybe just uh, use for some further anal analysis. But what I noticed, and also this this post is talking about it. Basically, this is this post is saying that uh, now if you look at the post or or the button, insight button, it will show you something like this, issues for attention. And uh, it says here all, or basically you can, f you can have these tabs. Stuck means that something is waiting for something to happen for a long time. I guess uh, this will show issues that are in a particular status for a long time, which is which is good, makes sense. Something similar to this, we have blocked. So basically, if you have issue links and uh, issue links of type block, blocks, then it will be displayed here. So for a particular sprint, it, this can be useful. And of course, you know, based on where you're doing doing this, for example, right now I'm talking about sprint six. You can also click on flagged and it will show you all the flagged items, basically impediments. And uh, because we are talking about a sprint, we have this print information. Great. And also at the same time, we have sprint burn down. Now this sprint burn down, I'll probably show you another example. This is useful because uh, you, I mean, it is just your uh, 
burned on chart, but you also have uh, under it the scope change. Let me show you one more example. And of course, we have the epic progress. So basically for this sprint, if this sprint is uh, progressing towards uh, some um, epics, then those epics will be displayed here. So this is useful. And uh, you, you can see here if your burned on chart is perfect, then great. But if you keep on adding or removing something from your sprint, then this will show you that the scope change. So this is useful, really useful. I, I like that. At the same time, if you go to the backlog, you have the button, same button here, insight. And this will also show you uh, things like a sprint commitment and also, um, and by, by the way, this, this sprint commitment is actually good because uh, it will show you something like this, where basically it's like a velocity chart, I guess. But the good news is that I believe uh, now what will happen if I'm a scrum master, if I'm a project manager, I can just do some quick analysis here. And also at the same time, I can see the issue breakdown. Useful, right? So I like that. And, uh, and this is something that you will also get with your Kanban based board. So basically more or less the same thing, but of course, you know, you don't, you don't really have sprints in it, but useful. I, I like that. I quite uh, like the idea of uh, having uh, these quick uh, blocks for analysis and, you know, making sure that you're able to find your work or basically, you know, take action based on the information that you see here. So useful thing. So you can, of course, you know, read about the post here and uh, try it out. The next update is uh, not really not really a recent update, but I thought I'll probably talk about it because I didn't get a chance to talk about it recently in my previous videos. So we all know about notifications in Jira and notifications are great because people want to get notified from the tool and it is actually uh, one of the key feature. Now, when I, when I work with my clients or uh, if I'm doing some uh, initial pre-sale, usually the procurement team, they send you like a sheet <clears throat> or questions and uh, those questions are basically about, okay, can this tool do these things and, uh, and, and, and for the details, like basically they want to know about those features and notifications is always like, always there. People want to get notified and it makes sense because Jira is a tool where you, of course you can go to the UI and you can collaborate, but you want Jira to notify people. Now those notifications could be, you know, a message to Slack or Teams or, uh, or of course, you know, emails. Emails is something that we're talking about. Now when it comes to emails, it can get very noisy because uh, you can have a lot of emails from Jira, generated from Jira, but at the same time, uh, Emails are important. Now, what I believe will happen now, Jira will create a batch of those emails. For example, if you are involved in some issue, so Jira will not really send you like an update of each and every individual issue separately. It will basically create uh, some kind of like a grouping and then it will uh, send you an update, which is great. At the same time, I think there are still updates like uh, when the issue is assigned to you or whenever you are mentioned in a comment, the email will be still separate, which is which is fine, which makes sense. So this is something that I think will help uh, re reducing the noise. And uh, I'm, I'm going to try out how it works because my clients, they actually rely, rely on emails and they want to net, get, get notified immediately. Or at least the expectation is that some, when something happens or when something is uh, waiting for someone, they want to make sure the email is sent out. <laughs> so like without any delay. So I, I need to figure out how this will work. I, I know there are some de details on this page and uh, I will of course, you know, take a look at it and uh, I'll probably get into the details. But if you are a consultant, if you are a Jira admin or if you are a Jira user, you should be aware of this. The next uh, thing I want to talk about is uh, Confluence. Now, video of the week. Every, every week I talk about uh, one video which I pick up and I want to, you know, highlight. Now, I don't really make too many videos on Confluence because Confluence is not very difficult tool to, tool to use. It's simple. You just start using it. Of course, there are things that you can configure, but it is nowhere like Jira. 
uh, talking about the features and the complexity and uh, flexibility customizations. But still, I know Confluence is a very popular tool. People use it a lot. And I try to make, it's not like I don't really have any Confluence videos. I do have a lot of Confluence videos, but uh, my Confluence videos are not really like a daily thing because I make daily videos on Jira, mostly Jira. But I have started talking a bit more about Confluence uh, and I'll try to be regular. If I can find something useful, uh, worth sharing, I will share it. Now, in this video, I actually talked about how you can create uh, tables and uh, analyze those uh, tables in charts. And it can be done very easily. It's very quick. Basically, what you can do is you can, when you create a new table in conference, you can actually at the same time create a chart. And that chart is actually something that you can update while the table is getting updated amazing i mean it, it it works really nicely so you should take a look at it because if you have some data in conference which i believe is a very common use case people use conference not really for collaboration but they also use it for, to create reports within confluence so you may want to to, to look at this uh, this video and uh, the last thing i want to talk about is uh, it's basically this channel called uh, Sparks is. So hello, hello. many people uh, know that I basically run a company called Sparks. Basically, it's an Atlassian consultancy company, but we are independent. We try uh, to provide uh, world class Atlassian consultancy. And our focus is, of course, around uh, Atlassian tools. And but, but, but our niche is actually automation integration. You know, we do a lot of script runner work. And uh, we do, I mean, training or when, when you talk about consultation, training is always there. And of course, you know, when I, when I share a video on my channel, Sparks, I mean, not Sparks, it's Ravi Sagar channel, this channel, my videos are mostly me talking about something which I want to share, like a small thing, small update. And of course, there is a theme. And that theme is basically, okay, if I'm going to talk about uh, advanced roadmaps, or if I'm going to talk about, let us say, Confluence or Automation, there is a playlist and which is great. But mo most of my videos are basically, you know, they are not always linked to each other. They are not always planned. They are not always in series. And uh, my channel, Ravi Sagar channel is uh, something where I, you know, just make, I'll try to make a daily video and I think I have been regular. But at the same time, on our channel, company channel, Sparks' channel, we are now trying to uh, create videos that would be planned and uh, those those videos would of, would of course uh, be not only planned but will be creating better videos or i should say because my videos like if i look at my channel ravi sagar channel i have uh, thousands of videos and as, as i just mentioned those videos are mostly uh, not always organized like they are, they are, of course, talking about a topic, but they are not really easy to follow when it comes to, I mean, if you follow my, I mean, you can watch my video on Ravi Sagar and you'll learn something. But if you're trying to learn something as a whole, uh, of course, I do have some series like, play, I think I made like few series where I mentioned or where I basically focused on just, just one topic for like few weeks. And that was like a series. But now we want to do more of it on Sparks. So please subscribe to my channel or, or, or our company channel, Sparks, and uh, support us. Of course, uh, our focus would still be Atlassian because that is what we do. But you can expect a few other uh, topics. Uh, of course, things that we do, not really random topics. So that is, that is all I wanted to talk about. The last update is actually about uh, Sparks' YouTube channel. And I hope you will uh, support us. All right, that is it. That is it for uh, for today. I hope you enjoyed watching this uh, video, this session on Atlassian updates with me. All right, thank you very much. Bye-bye.